Welcome to my channel Inspirational Quest. Subscribe to my channel and press bell icon for future videos. In today's video, I am going to share all the available information regarding coronavirus, which is a deadly virus and is a global pandemic now. Let's start. What it is? What this coronavirus is? Coronaviruses are large family of viruses. They are zoonotic, means transmitted between animals and humans. They cause disease in mammals and birds, typically infect bats and cats. Sometimes coronavirus evolve and infect humans. Seven strains are known to infect humans. Three recent examples of human infections are 2019 and COV, SARS, COV, and MERS, COV. In humans, the coronaviruses, they cause respiratory infections, which are typically mild, including the common cold to more severe respiratory diseases, and rare forms like SARS and MERS can be lethal. So now we are going to talk about the novel coronavirus. A novel coronavirus is a new strain it has not been previously identified in humans. First identified by authorities in Wuhan, Hubei, China as the cause of the ongoing 2019-2020 Wuhan coronavirus outbreak. A lot of features of this virus we don't understand yet. That's why public health officials are taking it so seriously. Now let's talk about its structure. Genomic sequence shows it is a positive sense single-stranded RNA virus. Coronavirus are named for the crown-like spikes on their surface. This is the model of the coronavirus. Uh, spikes can be seen and in the pink color that is the RNA of this virus. This is the cross-section of the virus. What is the incubation period of novel coronavirus? Incubation period is from 2 to 14 days. Reports have emerged that virus is infectious even during the incubation period. Contagious for a few days, 2-5 14 days of incubation period, person feeling well but still could be contagious. How does it spread? It is a contagious virus. Human-to-human -human transmission of the virus has been confirmed. It stays on the surface for at least for five days. It has been established that virus is able to transmit along a chain of at least four people. What are the symptoms? Most of the people, they feel flu-like symptoms at first. Fever in 98%, cough 76%, myalgia or fatigue 44%, sputum production 28%, headache 8%, hemoptysis that is blood in sputum 5%, diarrhea 3%, dyspnea 55%. Dyspnea is shortness of breath. Most of the patients infected with coronavirus are men and less than half had underlying disease like diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, that is heart and vessel disease. Available information suggests that older adults and people with underlying health conditions or compromised immune systems may be at increased risk of severe disease. 
Now let's talk about the course of illness. Median time from onset of illness to dyspnea 8 days. Median time from onset of symptom to first hospital admission 7 days. Time from onset of symptoms to mechanical ventilation was 10 to 11 days. Leukopenia, lymphopenia. Now we'll move on to the complications of this virus. Pneumonia with abnormal finding on chest CT. Acute respiratory distress syndrome, acute cardiac heart injury, secondary infections, kidney failure, mortality in 3%. Now let's talk about its, uh, how it can be treated. No specific treatment is currently available, mainly supportive and is focused on alleviation of symptoms include, including fever, fatigue, dry cough, shortness of breath, pneumonia and kidney failure in severe cases. Drink plenty of liquid, good nutrition and vitamins, especially vitamin D and vitamin C. Oxygen for hypoxemia. Hypoxemia is the decreased level of oxygen in the blood. No specific antiviral drugs, no vaccine yet. There are several treatments, they are under trial. For example, the China, Chinese Center of, for Disease Control and Prevention is testing existing pneumonia treatment for efficacy in treating coronavirus-related pneumonia. Existing antivirals are being studied, including protease inhibitors. The effectiveness of previously identified MABs is also under investigations. How we can protect from coronavirus? The best way to prevent infection is to avoid being exposed to this virus. Wash your hand often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If soap and water are not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. So don't just trust on hand sanitizer when you can wash your hands. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue, then throw the tissue in the trash. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. As it was mentioned earlier, it can stay for five days on the surfaces. These are everyday habits that can help prevent the spread of several viruses. Stay home if possible, avoid undue traveling on public buses and planes, and avoid public places. Avoid contact with symptomatic patients and potential carriers. If you have symptoms or suspicion of having contact with carrier, go to healthcare provider. Wearing mask is not recommended for everyone. Now let's talk about wearing mask if it is helpful or not. This is the surgical mask and this one is the N95 medical mask. Surgical mask is helpful but not fully because it is leaky and cannot stop virus entry. For carriers and or patients, wearing mask protects spreading infection to the others. N95 mask, which helps protect getting viruses, is only recommended for medical personnel. Wearing mask may help reducing the touching of face and nose. This could be one of the benefit of wearing mask. So there, there is a lot of, there are lots of debates on the media either to view whether to wear the mask or not. In January 2020, several organizations and institutions began, began work on creating vaccine for 2019 MCOV. In China, for example, in Massachusetts, in Australia, and also in Canada, they are actively working on to create the vaccine. What are the travel advisory? 
So avoid non-essential travel, practice enhanced precautions, practice usual precautions. CDC recommends avoiding non-essential travel to China. If you must travel, then avoid contact with sick people, discuss travel to China with your health care provider, older adults and traveler with underlying health issues may be at risk for more severe diseases. Avoid animal alive or dead, animal markets and products that come from animals such as uncooked meat. Wash hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer if soap and water are not available. Now, what are the travel advisory for the recently returned travelers? If you were in China in the last 14 days and feel sick with fever, cough, or difficulty breathing, you should seek medical care right away. Before you go to a doctor's office or emergency room, call ahead and tell them about your recent travel and your symptoms. Avoid contact with others, self-quarantine if you have symptoms. Practice all preventive measures as mentioned earlier. WHO declared novel coronavirus a global pandemic on January 30th, 2020. And this information is uh, collected from all authenticated sources. Thanks for watching this video.